First fish in the net. Morning all, you find us at this stunning uh, southern Stillwater. Got here early this morning, mist was rolling in, very atmospheric, a right piker's morning. Today you'll find us fishing with uh, roving dead baits um, on the float, never fished the water before, so we've chosen this is the best method, going to try and search out the fish rather than the fish coming to us, and then we can also get to know the water a lot better. Vitally important to have the right gear at the right time. Have your mat ready to go and your unhooking equipment ready to go as well, including your sling and your scales. Never have to leave the fish in the landing net or something like that. It needs to be all prepared and then you can deal with the fish straight away. Right, we've just had a pick up on the float ledge express mount. We're not going to wait long, we're going to hit it. That's a good fish. First fish in the net. Okay, fish is in the net. We'll show you now how to get it safely from the net onto the mat. Simple case of just collapsing the landing net, getting the fish pointing the right way, making sure the fins are facing the right way, which they are. Bring the fish up to the mat. Fish is on the mat. It's now time to get the hooks out. These cradles are great. Stops the fish from sliding out and fully protects the fish. Just need to get the fish, the back facing you. And it's a simple case of bringing your fingers to here and gripping like this and cocking the wrist. As you can see, the hooks are in a perfect place. A simple case. Important of having a tight grip and the hooks are out. You see I've got my bait back, we'll go through that later on. There's a method I use of always getting your bait, bait coming back to you. Here we go, it's a fish, very nice clean fish, maybe eight pound but a good start to the day. You can see I'm holding the fish by chinning it. I don't like the grip where you're holding the fish like that. One, you've got no control over the fish if it flips, and two, you're putting unnecessary pressure on the vital organs located around here. On a small fish like this, all you need to do is chin the fish and hold it like this. You've got full control. Happy days. Okay, time to get the fish back. 
minimum handling, maximum conservation. No need to weigh this fish, but you can see I've got the sling ready. It's wet, and like the mat, it needs to be wet before it come, comes in contact with the fish. The fish will be transported in the waste sling. No carrying fish to the water's edge. In a simple way, let's get the fish in the sling. Make sure the fins are pointing the right way. And the best way of doing that is just running your hands down its underside. And then the fish can go back completely safe. I like to cover the correct way of recovering fish. You see far too many people not returning fish properly. You've got to recover them. Now this fish might want to go straight away, but it's just a simple case of holding the fish on the tail root, getting it upright and supporting the fish. Now this could take five minutes. If it takes five minutes, you stay with the fish for five minutes. It's just a case of simple, holding the fish like this. You normally find the fish is recovering, the fins start moving more, the gill plates start pumping like they are now. And a good thing is to just let the fish support its own weight now and you can get a good idea of the recovery rate of the fish. You can see the fish starting to get more strength. But again, I'm not happy to let this fish go at the moment. This fish's welfare is my responsibility now and you've got to do things properly. There she goes. So, I really hope you're enjoying this dead baiting film. Pike are an amazing species to catch, but I would love to know what your favorite way of catching them is. Is it dead baiting or is it with lures? Which side are you on? Let us know in the comments below, we'd love to know. Right, good practice is to perform a low test on every single rig that you have. Uh, this is a float ledged rig, I've just had that fish, and I wanna make sure this rig is gonna hold any cast, any snag, and more importantly, any fish. To perform this, it's quite simple. Just attach your bottom treble to the zipper of your rucksack. Walk back and load the rig up. I'm putting full pressure now on this rod. I'm fully confident that this rig will handle any eventuality that I'm likely to encounter. Very important. It might take 10, 20 seconds. Vitally important. Fish welfare. So we've had one drop run and one fish from this swim. It's gone a bit quiet now, so I think it's time to get on our heels and go and find some fish. Vitally important to try and find the fish, especially on a new water. So we're going to head over to a swim behind us. It's a point swim, commands a lot of uh, area that we can cover and maybe can get a third one out. See you there. All you budding pike anglers out there, you must go with the right equipment. Fox Razor brought out the fantastic bit of kit, which is the tool roll, and it has everything you're likely to need. Starting off with trace blades, crimping pliers, and people that want to make their own traces. We've got the split ring pliers, great for you lure anglers out there. These two here, pliers. Nice bent handle, so your hand doesn't get in the way of your view of you unhooking the fish. Nice and powerful, great bits of kit. We've got the mechanical pliers, which are great for going through the front snout of the fish. Not so much the gill rakers, but again, a lot of power and get any hooks out with these. 
Side cutters, a lot of people get these wrong. They think they're for cutting wire. They're not, they're for cutting problem hooks. Hooks located around the gill rakers or even deep hook fish. You must have something like this to deal with event, that eventuality. Also, lure anglers, if you are hooking fish around by the, the, the eyes or the face of the fish, again, don't rip the hook out. Use these side cutters to get the hooks out. And finally, the good old fashioned forceps. Don't need much introduction. I like to actually clip these on here so I can actually deal with fish on down in the margins rather than getting the fish unnecessarily on the map. That's your kit. Don't go without it. Okay, after that um, first fish we had early this morning, things gone a little bit quiet really. Uh, sun's been out, uh, very calm, not great conditions. We can give a load of excuses. Um, tried a lot of areas, um, float fishing, float ledgering rigs uh, all over the place really, uh, with not much luck. Uh, so I'd like to take this opportunity to go through the hardware and rigs that we've been using. Uh, start off with the rod. It's the uh, Fox Predator Elite uh, boat rod. Use it on my boat, fantastic rods for boat fishing, but also being in 10 foot, three pound test curve, they are great for this sort of fishing too. Uh, just going around swim to swim, you don't need anything longer or too cumbersome. Great, nice um, through action rod, um, nice, abbreviated but uh, really are a top quality rod um, yeah very good rod reels we've been using the EOS 10,000 Pro on the bait runner obviously bait runner facility nice compact reel perfect size and that is holding the new Fox Elite braid which is coming out to any time now I believe it is out um, this is the 60 pound version. They also come in 40 pound. Um, it's the first time I've used it today and it's been brilliant. It's, uh, it's performed exactly how I want it. Uh, and in 60 pound, I know that whatever I kind of come across, any snag or whatever, I'm going to bend those hooks out and I'm going to get my rig back. So great bit of a uh, kit, the new Elite Braid. Okay, moving on to the braid, we have the Fox Predator float stop. A small bead, Fox Predator, float, another bead, and then we have an uptrace. These are vitally important. It stops pike coming up with the bait, coming in contact with the main line and potentially giving you bite offs. So critical we use an uptrace. Moving on down from the uptrace, we have an egg sinker which is fixed to the swivel and then we have our bait trace which is 49 strand with two size eight trebles simple as that okay the day's drawing to the end uh, sort of struggled a bit. Uh, we've had that drop take in the morning uh, and a fish in the morning. Since then, we have basically covered near enough most of the water. Unfortunately, with not much interest, uh, that's fishing, I guess. Um, we'll be back next time, uh, maybe with different tactics, uh, as we know now the water better. Um, hope you picked up some tips, and we'll see you on the bank sometime soon. See you later.